Guys and girls, it's she's named Kate and welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to tell you guys my likes and my dislikes about BMW's R1300 GS. So if you're interested in what I have to say, then keep watching and I'll play that intro. Look at this day, it is absolutely vile. Now, I wouldn't normally be out by choice on a day like this, but work is work. I've got to drop this wonderful bike back off at Halliwell Jones Motor Red in Chester. So normally I just power on in this weather and get where I need to be, but I'm just chilling in this lane for the minute because I want to be able to communicate with you guys without horrific audio. So. I'm not just being a little wimpling, there is a method in my madness. So yeah, in this video I just wanted to talk to you guys about my likes and my dislikes. So, first off, we're going to start with my likes. Firstly, let's whack these heat grips up to three whilst I'm on the move. There we go. Oh, it's a windy one today, sheesh! Number one thing that I really really like about this bike. Now I have an R1200GS, if you guys follow my channel you'll know this, although she's a bit of a garage queen at the moment and only comes out occasionally since I'm very fortunate to get press bikes here and there. I have extensive right, like miles under my belt on the R1250GSs. And now I'm finally getting a bit of mileage under my belt on this bad boy as well. Let's uh, weasel through if we can. Weasel, weasel, coming through. Toot, toot, beep, beep. Oh, it's just miserable. Absolutely miserable. And it's always a bit risky filtering here because people are changing lanes left, right and centre. But as long as we keep our eyes peeled, we should be alright. Thank this man, thank you. So we've got to get right over into that fourth lane which can be pretty troublesome. In fact, I'm just going to skirt in here I think and get ready to mooch over. We can go here, everyone's trying to get over. So yeah, sorry, uh, takes a bit of concentration this uh, filtering game on this bit of the motorway, it's pretty grim. I also desperately want this guy to see me and absolutely not kill me. So I might just scutch in here, stuck my leg out to say thank you and just hopping along, get out of that live lane. Hmm, it's quite narrow up there, isn't it? With all the big trucks and wagons, but still. We'll, uh, we'll give it a bit of a go. So one of the things that I particularly like about the 1300 is it's quite lithe and agile. It feels sportier, not only in ride in my opinion, but also just in ergonomics in how it feels. It feels a bit smaller. I mean, don't get me wrong, it still does feel very much like a GS, in my opinion. But it does just feel a little bit lither, you know? A little bit more agile, and I like that about it. We've got a bit of extra power, we've got a bit of extra torque. See, that wagon there is doing something very clever by leaving that massive space because people jump in there and sometimes people won't let them in and they almost cause massive pile-ups so that's quite preventative nice one HGV oh my god guys can I get a hiya oh 
perfectly executed as usual. Right, yeah, lithe, agile, feels a bit sportier, a bit sprightlier, a bit spunkier, we love it. Well, I like it anyway. Plus, plus, I think about 95% of GS owners aren't going to be taking their GSs off-road. So the fact that they've just made it a bit more, you know, sporty feeling in my opinion, is pretty good. It would be nice to weasel through. I think he moved over a bit for me, give him a bit of a wave. So I really, really like that about it. Second thing that I like about it, the comfort. Oh my days. So I rode the Tramontana and I found it so comfortable on the old bum cheeks. Oh, let's go through here. We got this. And I've ridden this one for quite a few miles. And this has a taller seat on than the Tramontana because it's the trophy. So this one does have that taller seat. Yeah, these aren't uh, great to overtake on these cat size. Plus it's a solid, so couldn't even if I wanted to. Well, at least I'm in. I've got a place in the race. I've got a place in the race. I got a place in the race. Sir. So yeah, I love the comfort of these bikes. I find them so great on my bum. Now I did 400 and 50 or 430 miles in one hit once on the way up to Scotland for mine and Mike's NC500 trip and I actually found the 1250 seat really really comfy as well. I think I'd be able to do the same amount of miles if not slightly more on these seats to be quite honest. Just going off memory of how I found it you know comfort wise I think it is a very very comfy bike for sure another thing that I like about this bike is it's got so many tech options now I know everybody is saying oh the price is crazy the price is crazy it's 24 grand by the time you spec one up and you know that is true if you want a TE with the kitchen sink thrown at it of course but if you wanted to have a GS, you could get a white non-TE for as <laughs> little as £15,990. I mean, if I was going down that route that I really, really wanted one, um, but I couldn't afford TE spec, then I would definitely put heated grips on it. I would definitely put the adaptive vehicle ride height on it for sure. And I feel like I'd definitely spec it with riding pro modes definitely because i think the dynamic mode for the throttle is very important for this bike it's just not the same without it but then that depends on if you like the white one or if you want something else because instantly on a non-te if you want to want the green and gold option i guess it's going to cost you an extra like plus two thousand pounds because of all the extra bits it comes with to have that color option so yeah, it can be wild, but it just depends what you want out of your GS, doesn't it, really? Uh, another thing that I really, really like about this bike is the TFC Dash. A 6.5 inch goodness. I'm so happy they didn't put the RT Dash on that kind of everybody was calling for. I think it's something ridiculous, like 10 and a quarter inches, something like that. But people were like, oh, it needs to get the RT dash. It absolutely does not. Can you imagine a massive dash there? I think it'd look ridiculous. Like, very, very silly. So, yes, I love the dash. I think it is one of the easiest dashes to use, menu-wise, connectivity-wise. And just to visually look at, I love the status line content at the top where you can very easily just select all the main things that you want to see. So like right now it's telling me I've got 105 miles until I need to fuel up. If we press the up button on the menu, we can toggle through bars, we can toggle through an odometer, all that jazz. I just love how clear and crisp everything is on this dash. That is a big plus for me huge plus another thing that i really like is just the smoothness of this bike let's uh, get out of a lorry's blind spot don't like that so much plus it wanted to move over so that was a white shout but yeah i love the smooth 
madness of this ride. I rode this bike back from Halliwell Jones in Chester and believe it or not my sat nav stopped working and you'd think I'd know how to get home wouldn't you but I wanted to film a bit of town work so I jumped off I deviated away from my sat nav's guidance and then it decided to have a strop with me and just not work so then I thought I'd jump back on the motorway but I had no idea where I was kind of jumped on the wrong motorway went ridiculously far out of my way like an absolute plebeian and got really really lost so the point of this jibber jabber story is that I spent a lot of time on the motorway by accident <laughs> and this might be a negative for some of you because you want to feel that character that vibe that grumble whatever but I found it so smooth it felt almost on the motorway like I was on a rev and go like I was on an automatic <laughs> because it was just that smooth but from a comfort perspective if you're doing big mile munching that's not a bad thing in my opinion right put the heat grips back up to three because when you're on the motorway and the wind's hitting you it's great but when you kind of filter in at, on level three it is like you're dipping your hands in the fiery pits of Mordor. Oh, what a day I've picked, eh? What a day! Another thing that I like is I love the fact that they've done away with the painted finish on the pots, on the cylinder heads. You know, it's no secret that BMW had issues with blistering bubbling paint and a lot of them were recalled and repainted or given whole new engines under warranty which to be honest I can't lie if I'd done like 15,000 miles on my engine and it was still in warranty and I needed a new engine I'd be like grizzled <laughs> clean slate but it's obviously cost BMW in the bajillions technical term so from BMW being smart perspective the fact that they put a different finish on the parts on the final drive might be a very good call for them financially but it might also be a good call for the customer which I guess is the most important bit from a cleaning perspective bloody hell we all know it was murder to get in the grooves of the fins and uh, really give it a good old scrub and a clean and get to the hard to reach areas but I don't know the 1300 GS just feels a bit less bitty it feels a, a bit more like a collective smooth sleek body which should be easier for cleaning if you've owned a 1250 and you now have a 1300 and let me know in the comments below if I'm talking gibberish or if it is what wow, actually a bit better on the cleaning front I am proper keen to know okay now moving on to a few things that I don't quite like one of the things that almost really put me off this bike and I thought I don't know if I could actually own one of these in the future is when I took the Tramontana out obviously that bike had been PDI'd so it was you know safe to ride but it hadn't had its first service and that engine if you look back on my R1300GS video where I'm stood posing on the thumbnail like Miss Trunchable with the arms crossed if you go back and have a look at that video and listen the engine is audibly ridiculously noisy now I had my custom fit oh god I hate this motorway it's so bumpy oh another like of this bike suspension telly lever still but for some reason it feels more like gliding on a cloud and obviously with the DSA <laughs> obviously with the DSA if you opt for that then you can tweak it, it can adapt to how you ride it, on what surfaces, very very good. Anyway, back to things I don't like. 
yeah if you look at that video the first the first ride impression video that I did on the 1300 oh sorry this motorway is unbearably bouncy Ugh. so yeah if you look at that video you can hear on the video how noisy that engine is and I actually found it very very distracting so distracting to the point I thought I don't think I could live with this I couldn't live with the loud annoying engine noise that this bike produces it was so loud it was loud enough so that I was conscious of it and it was really really irritating to me anyway um, a few months later dad was like I, I want to test ride it so I'm like oh let me know what you think of the engine noise anyway he didn't test ride the one I've been on and he was like I didn't find it that bad you know he said I've done some research and it seems that it quietens off after the first service and I was like mm, yeah sure it does anyway I've been riding this bike and when I got it, it had something like 800 and 20 miles on it and this bike I've not noticed the noise whatsoever and it's made me actually really really enjoy the riding experience now it isn't really a fair and valid test because dad didn't ride the exact same bike that I rode after that had had a service and I'm on a different bike I'm not on the same bike so it isn't really a fair and true uh, it's not set in stone but it is just a theory that makes sense given my experience now guys and girls if you own an R1300 GS please let us know in the comments below if you noticed the engine go quieter after the first service I'd be very very intrigued to know but yeah I have that down as a negative because if somebody's riding this bike before the first service you know it almost put me off I almost thought hang on a minute I don't know if I could live with this bike just from the sheer annoying engine sound that it has and if I'd have said that in my first review my first ride review I could have put off so many people but I wanted to reserve judgment on it because you know you get back to the dealership you ask questions you, you do what my dad did you look at the research that's on the internet and yeah I'm really glad that I didn't mention it because well I did mention the noise but I'm glad that I kind of held my judgment back a little bit because this bike has been an absolute pleasure to ride but that could absolutely put people off so next thing that I don't particularly like is the lack of backlit switch gear come on BMW people have been crying out for that since the 1250 GS came out all the competitors pretty much have it and now that the switch gear has gotten even more complicated with things as the missing and flyers all over the terms the hamburger button you know we've got a lot more going on so it would be nice to actually see it in the dark so that is a bit of a dislike because I feel like it could have been so easy and I feel like so many people wanted it and BMW just didn't deliver on it so that's a bit disappointing also if we do dive into the switch gear again this this doesn't impact my love for the dash I love the dash but the dash has just gotten a little bit more complicated to navigate given the fact that we do have like the rocker switch button there or the hamburg button and a uh, different uh, another up and down button like we've, we've just added more elements to confuse the technophobes yeah it's an absolute minger of a day an absolute minger 
another thing where they've seemed to miss the mark with the British audience and is another dislike is that integrated tail light with the indicators instead of having a dedicated rear light that acts as just a light and a back brake now everything is in the indicators so the two indicators act as a, a main light there's a red light that's on all the time when you ride then when you indicate the the red light is still up on both of them but it flashes depending on you know which side you're indicating on and they just go brighter if you break but it's all one unit and there's a lot of people in the UK particularly that don't like that now when I used to sell BMWs we did have a few grumbles when the 1250s came out and people were like oh I hate that that setup it's dangerous blah 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 one of the bits of feedback that I actually got from BMW direct was that they're actually quite shocked that the UK has responded in this way because the Europeans don't have any complaints about the setup and actually quite like it and prefer it. So it wouldn't surprise me if BMW have just thought, hmm, where do we sell more of these BMW GSs in Europe? UK's probably quite a small chunk of the market by comparison <laughs> we'll not do anything for these morning grumblers they can just deal with it they'll want to be they'll want a bmw gs so they can just put up with it because they probably just don't feel any reason to change it given the fact that the europeans like it so much and that is just one bit of information that i've had off one person so whether that's accurate or not <laughs> don't shoot the messenger it's a theory again we like theories on this video but if you're european and you know you disagree with that statement please let us know in the comments so things i don't like we've had the noisy engine before the first service we've had non-illuminated switch gear that's a bit of a disappointment we've covered the tail light and indicators that are integrated but that's quite a big strong uh, collective uk dislike another thing that i'm not particularly sold on i got told this new quick shifter and auto blipper or gear shift assist pro as is bmw's technical name you know, I was led to believe that this uh, quick shifter and blipper was going to be groundbreaking, it was going to be awesome, super smooth. But that's just not been my experience of it, to tell you the truth. I feel like people say you didn't really comment on it um, in your first ride review. And that's because I couldn't make my mind up as to whether it was better or not. I was seriously on the fence about it and I was just pondering as I was riding but I never really vocalised it in that video but I've come to ride it more and it's not a bad one it's not a bad one I just don't know whether it's massively better than the 1250 one sometimes I'll ride it and I'll be like oh yeah they've refined that and then I'll go down the box and I'll be like oh no they haven't oh that's just as clunky as the 1250 but again, it's still better than not having one. <laughs> like, I'm still grateful it's on there, even if it's not the Japanese standard of silkiness. You know? We'll go. Because this uh, Citroen's being slow. So yeah, I'd probably say another, like, meh point is the insurance. I tell you, the amount of people that are struggling now to insure this bike, now that it's for a, a fully loaded TE spec, now that it's pipping over £20,000, oh, insurance companies don't like it. Now, if you are struggling with insurance, I am sponsored by Bikeshare Insurance. And Bikeshare give me that freedom financially to be able to continue doing YouTube as a full-time job and bringing you guys videos. So obviously I'm going to suggest that you try getting a quote from them guys as they are brokers so they do scour the length and breadth of the insurance companies to get you a good quote. 
Now, just for transparency, of course, they do sponsor my channel. This is no secret, but I'm not on any kind of referral scheme. So if you guys take a policy out and you say, oh, I've seen uh, you guys on Username Kate's channel, like I don't get an individual kickback per referral, just so you guys know. But it does make me happy when I find out that my audience do benefit from discounts. So hence why I tell you guys uh, quite frequently about that. Well, we're nearly back at Halliwell Jones and I ended on insurance being a dislike. But yeah, there's a lot of people out there struggling to get insurance. So if you are in the market for, you know, a GS, a, 13, a 1300. Your destination is on the left. I would definitely advise uh, trying to get a quote before you commit to an order. So yeah guys, there we have it. We're back at Halliwell Jones. I hope you've enjoyed my likes and dislikes on this bike. If you have, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. And until the next time guys, take care and ride safe. Bye.